Hello, I'm Anthony Murphy of Mythical Ireland. This is a short video just demonstrating very basically how the moon moves through phases as it completes a cir circuit of the sky. I'm beginning this, I'm using the software Stellarium, which is free to download, a magnificent program uh, for studying astronomy and for showing the positions of sun, moon and planets among the stars at any date and time. Um, so I'm starting this on the 23rd of March 2023, um, which is just a couple of days ago. I'm beginning at what we would consider the, uh, the, the start of the lunar month. The time when the, I'm just going to move forward in time here a little bit. You can see it's near the horizon. So this is the moon as it is about to set. Uh, the beginning of the lunar month is really reckoned and probably has been since time immemorial by uh, ancient uh, cultures around the world uh, by its first appearance in the West. After its three day disappearance, because there are three days of the lunar month when the moon uh, is invisible to us because the rear face of the moon is being illuminated by the sun. The moon is in the same area of the sky as the sun and the far side of the moon is being illuminated but the near side is in darkness and because of the scattering of light which gives us daylight if we go back in time here. This should be, done. let's go back an hour. This should be demonstrated, you know, that the moon just becomes invisible. Uh, okay, you can see the crescent here because if we go back a day actually, a couple of days, you can see that the moon Although you can see it there on the screen, it is practically invisible. Anyway, I'm getting somewhat distracted here. Uh, let me just go back to where I was. So this is the 23rd of March, 2023, the first appearance uh, of the moon. So this is something that was obvious to human beings all around the world throughout history and prehistory. But I think in modern times is less obvious or or not obvious at all. Some people, I suspect today, because we've lost our visual connection with the night sky, and because so many people live in br brilliantly lit cities, and because because we all spend time indoors, under roof, roofs and ceilings, uh, with artificial light and screens and everything else, we don't watch the moon the way we used to. And so I suspect a lot of people today don't actually realise that the moon moves through a sequence of phases from night to night or from day to day. You can see the moon during the day except for uh, the full moon because the full moon is always opposite the sun. So let's just run through the month here. This is the 23rd of March. We go to the following day and you'll see we've gone from a very, very thin sliver of light to something a little bit thicker. Now, if you watch here, sorry, apologies. If you watch here, this illuminated figure here. Oh, I'm sorry, I've moved that out of position. If you watch the illuminated figure, as we go from day to day, you'll see that figure increase. So we went from 5.5% to 11.6% in a day. And then another day, the crescent gets thicker. And in another day, it gets thicker again. Until after a number of days, we reach what astronomers call the first quarter phase. Now, the reason they call it the first quarter is because it, what we are seeing is one quarter of the total surface area of the moon illuminated. However, it probably would be convenient to call it the first half because we're seeing half of the face of the moon illuminated. Then we move on a few days. And of course, as we move, the moon is getting further from the sun, hence the way it's rotating. But we'll, we'll compensate for that as we go along. Uh, this phase of the moon between first half and full moon or first quarter and full moon, if you will, is called waxing gibbous, G-I-B-B-O-U-S. You see 75% illuminated. And we keep going. Until the moon is, you see the age of the moon here, until the moon is 14 days old and then we get full moon. Now, the eagle eyed among you may have noticed that although this uh, 13th day of the moon looks like it's uh, full, in fact it's 98.3% illuminated. There is an area on the lower left limb of the moon that is not illuminated. We have to go forward a day to get the full moon. And then the day, the day after, let me just, I know what's happening here. It's, it's the effect of the moon being near the horizon. Let me just go forward in hours 
so that we can keep the moon high in the sky. So a day past full moon, there's a, a small amount of the moon on the upper right that is not illuminated. And then we progress towards what's called waning gibbous. The moon is now on the wane. It's going from full uh, towards that time when it disappears again. Okay, sorry, I have to just uh, make an adjustment here time-wise. Apologies about this. And as we move forward, we get to the phase called uh, last quarter, what we might call last half, because it's a half of the face of the moon that's visible. OK, we, we're adjusting. What, what's happening here is that as I adjust in the days, the moon has moved uh, further uh, and I have to adjust the time to show you. So it's visible in daylight here. Or twilight. And as we progress, you'll see it goes from last half towards what we call waning crescent. The last crescent phases of the moon before we get to this very thin, again, a thin sliver of moonlight. Let's move forward an hour. And then the next day it has practically disappeared and uh, it becomes what a modern astronomy calls new moon is the invisible moon, the moon that we cannot see. And as you can see, that is the the day of new moon it's in the same area of the, uh, as the sky of the sky as the sun it's got its rear side facing us but it's the far side that's totally illuminated so an observer on that the sun side of the moon would see a full moon with the earth behind it but from our vantage point it appears to be invisible modern astronomy calls that the full moon which is confusing sorry it calls it the new moon which is confusing <laughs> for obvious reasons the moon is invisible it is not until oh hang on i have to center the moon again it is not until a couple of days later that we begin to see this crescent uh, reappearing that's the 22nd of of uh, april so that is in in brief a look at the moon as it goes through a month uh, in terms of its changing phases. Now, if we go back, I'm going to do that all again this time. Sorry, I was going to get into the right position here. This time, uh, we're going to take a very wide view to show you that day by day, in addition to changing phases, in addition to changing phases, the moon is moving further from the sun as it waxes out towards full moon until we get to that 14 days. And from there on, it's moving back in a, an easterly direction. It's moving back towards the sun again as it wanes. And again, we just have to adjust the time. Oh, I put a marker in there. I didn't mean to. Anyway, ignore that. Um, and it moves back towards the sun as it wanes out. And that is a, a very simple depiction of how the moon moves through phases as it moves around the sky.